Hi everyone, my name is Jess and I'm a thriftaholic. I'm a part-time reseller in Illinois and I am going to share with you my what sold for the weekend. I'm a part-time reseller. I stay at home, raise my three little kids and do this to stay busy and provide a little bit of a side hustle income. So let's get started. I'm going to go platform by platform and this was a holiday weekend so it's actually covering from I shipped out Friday, so this is covering Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, so four days. But stay tuned at the end. I will tell you my total gross sales, and it may shock you. Um, as a part-time reseller, I typically work maybe 12 hours a week, and this has been going on for five years now, and I absolutely love it. Okay, we are going to start with eBay, which was has always been bay for me. Uh, I initially started selling there and then I eventually cross posted to other platforms. Okay, so with eBay, we're going to go over some sales. I'm going to let you know how much it sold for. I also, so not only how much it sells for, how long did it take to sell? And relatively, the cost of goods, pretty low for me. Okay, so I also live in the middle of nowhere, so I like to focus on strictly vintage, but I do sprinkle in some modern pieces as well. Okay, so I had a person actually bundle two sweaters on eBay and they were plus size. They were size 3X plus size always sells super fast for me. And they, it was like a jean embroidered shirt jacket for one. And the other one was a black and floral embroidered tunic. They both sold for $50 and I had them listed for like two and a half weeks. So the person all in for $100 plus shipping. So I will refund probably $10 in shipping for them as they paid way more than they should have. Okay, next we have something that has sat for me. I initially bought this to send in to thread up. Then I got a home and realized it was missing <laughs> the tag or the size or something. Um, thread up, it's an online consignment store. They will not take items if it's missing the tag or uh, it needs the size. Okay. That one, it did take a while to sell. I can't even tell you how long it's been posted because I didn't show when I listed it, meaning it's been about nine months. <laughs> so this sold finally for $36, and it never told you really what the item was. Lauren Ralph Lauren wool blend jacket. Had a herringbone pattern. It was like a sweater jacket. I didn't tell you previously. The other two uh, plus size items that sold before were four dollars a piece so eight dollars into a hundred okay the Ralph Lauren sweater was two dollars for me cost of goods okay next we have something that I actually got Vroed on for eBay and it is the brand Bellafit I personally have worn these postpartum as I'm expecting my fourth kid in six weeks <laughs> yes I'm very pregnant and uh, Bellafit is a postpartum compression girdle. It really helps with um, support, as you know, may know. After having a baby, you like you feel funny, and uh, the strength in your core is not what it used to be. It also helps with swelling and just slimming down and feeling and looking better for yourself. So, anyways, I found this Bellafit postpartum girdle, new with tags, and they can retail for seventy-five to one hundred, depending on the style. It was a small and I had it listed. I took a picture of the model wearing the item for the main picture. And that is a no-no to use stock photos. It really depends on the brand. Certain brands will go after you like uh, Chico's, Gymshark, certain brands you need to look out for and avoid putting <laughs> the stock photo as your main picture. So. My listing got taken down, completely disappeared. It was unlisted for probably a month or two. Then I found it in my inventory, realized, oh hey, this isn't currently listed. So I read photographed it the other day and it sold in like two days. For $35, I did price it to sell. Um, some people were pricing it a little bit higher, but since mine was a size small and I just wanted to get it moved, I did only pay $3 for it and sold for $35. Okay. The next item that sold over the weekend is actually a consignment item. I typically have never done consignment one other time, but I personally know this person and decided to give it another shot. So this person had a pair of Justin 
cowboy boots. Justin is a very reputable brand. Tons of people wear boots around here, uh, especially Justin's. So these were nice. They were made in the USA, which if you go to Justin's website, the boots cost about twice the price of um, compared to being imported from other countries because the quality is most likely better and a lot of buyers like items made in the United States. Okay, so these boots took six weeks to sell. Comps were not the greatest. I did price higher than others, but since it was a consignment piece, I wanted to hold out because obviously I'm not getting all the profit. These sold for $60. And when I'm giving you all these numbers, just keep in mind, I do not pay for shipping. The buyer always pays for shipping, except on this next item. I don't know, I must have accidentally clicked free shipping. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't that much. Um, but it's this, I got this next item at the Goodwill Outlet, which is a Goodwill bins you pay by the pound. And this sucker was kind of heavy. I'm guessing it was three pounds. Therefore, I paid around five, six dollars for it. But this, I believe, is from uh, World War II era. After doing some research, and it's a vintage first aid kit. It was metal. It was previously mounted um, initially on something. It was empty, but it was in really nice condition. There was a little bit of patina on the back. Very rare. I actually couldn't find anything exactly like it online, but somebody did reach out to me and thought it was World War II era because I initially had thought maybe Vietnam, but they said no. They thought it was more World War II. So went with that. I actually had this up for auction for about three days with maybe seven views, and I was a little bit disappointed because I've had great luck with military items in the past. So I priced it as buy it now, which I typically do 99% of the time, and it sold in two weeks for $60. Now, luckily this fit in a padded flat rate envelope, so I paid $8 to ship it, meaning I made like $52. Uh, and then you always have to keep in mind fees for each platform. For eBay, and I don't really discuss this, but for eBay, I always do promoter listings. I don't do the setting rate because it varies by category and sometimes I think it's too much. Sorry, I think I'm a little too low in my chair. Um, but I set a 3% promotional rate for everything and it's just automatically added on to all of my listings. Okay. The next item that sold is a brand I will almost always pick up, Fit Flop. It's known for having those chunky soles, uh, sandals, they're made out of rubber, they're supposed to be really good for your feet, orthotic I think is what I put in this, I put orthopedic. Oh my gosh, you guys, my brain is like most straight now. Okay, so these, I got the bins. I paid $1.50 for them. They were black. They had some nice embellishment on them. These, uh, I didn't put the style name in here because I, apparently I didn't research that. But didn't matter. They sold relatively quick. They sold within a couple weeks for $30. A couple years ago, I think I used to get more but it's a little bit more saturated as more and more people are finding out about the brand. Or maybe they're just losing their popularity. Okay, this next item that sold is actually a video game, specifically for the Nintendo Game Boy Advance from 2002, and this was a very popular game, Breath of Fire 2. I'm not a gamer, my husband told me about it. Um, the last time I was like super addicted to games is probably when I played Sims and then before that I had a Game Boy Color a long time ago. Okay, that sold pretty quick. $35. Got that at the bins, guys. This was, I found two games in, with a case um, at the bins, so I paid maybe 25 cents for this. The next item that sold... I took a chance on this. Uh, sometimes vintage women's hats sit for me for like a year and I'm trying to be a faster flipper like three months or less um, unless it's a very unique piece. But I found this Frank Olive red wool felt moldable round brim hat. It was a woman's small and uh, 
I don't know. I don't know how you could, I'm sure you could style this and make it look super cute, but it was in great condition. Um, it looked like I didn't really see that many flaws. Uh, and that was on the interior, so it doesn't really matter. This one sold within three weeks for $40, and I paid 50 cents for it. So I think I got that at a local honey hole of mine where I find awesome vintage for really cheap. The next item was something I was actually going to pull and send in to thread up. Um, I no longer pick up fast fashion unless I know I can sell it for at least $30. So I'm getting more into trying to have more passive income as I'm going to have a baby soon and I'm not going to have as much time to work. So I had a Banana Republic factory dress that I previously sent a thread up back in 2020. Didn't sell. Sat in a death pile forever. I listed it on my platforms. Finally sold for a whopping $18. And I paid $1.50 for this initially. Banana Republic sweater dress mock neck. Really cute. But um, it might have been a, a little bit of a dated style, and it's also Banana Republic Factory, which the only time I would currently pick that up is if it was new with tags to send into thread up. The next item is the other Game Boy Advance game. Uh, they sat in my death pile for six months, which I don't know why, because I, I don't think I realized the value in these. Uh, Final Fantasy V. And this was made in Japan. I don't think that really matters. But yeah, again, I paid maybe 25 cents for this. And it sold for $65 in like a week, two weeks, week, not a week. And these were just the games. Didn't come with the case, nothing. Just games. Okay, that's for eBay. Now let's move on to Poshmark. For Poshmark, um... Well, just in general, if this is your first time watching me, I have roughly 12 to 1300 items listed across platforms. And I mainly do just like clothing, shoes, accessories, but I do do hard goods if the profit is there. Okay, so for Poshmark, something that completely shocked me, I'm starting to get into more online um, flipping as I haven't found near as much recently thrifting locally in my area. So. I went on to Facebook Marketplace. People price stuff there so, so cheap. And I found a Ralph Lauren black label turtleneck sweater on Facebook for $8. And it was like $4 and some change to ship. So all in, I was a little under $13. And if you're not familiar with Ralph Lauren, there's Ralph Lauren Sport, which is like one of the lowest Lauren Ralph Lauren. There's Polo Ralph Lauren. There's Black Label Ralph Lauren, which is, I'm doing these in order, um, which was from 2005 to 2015, and this is the sweater I had. So this was from, it's probably Y2K, because it was totally Y2K style. And uh, and then there's the Purple Label, which, if you find the Purple Label, good for you, because I've never found it. This is actually the only time I found the, blue, the Black Label. So like I said, I got it for $8, came in the mail. I did, I think, give it a little bit of a light sweater shave but it was a cashmere wool blend. And the person, when they put it on Facebook, they took a picture of the tag as the main picture. And that's actually a brilliant idea if you're targeting resellers, because that's what I look for in the clothing first. And it sold within just like a few weeks for $89. Full price offer, it wasn't a guest purchase. It was somebody that was a regular shopper on Poshmark. So they must really like the black label. Yeah, $89, so I don't have my fees right down to see how much I net profited, but nice, nice for it to be shipped right to my house. <laughs> okay, the next item, I uh, posted this on my Instagram because this was actually through an offer, and I have been the last six months more, oh, what's the word? I'm trying to communicate more so with potential buyers. So when somebody sends me an offer, I counter, um, depending on how newly listed the item is and how rare it is. And then if they give me a second counter offer and it's not too far off from where I wanna go, I will send them a message and let them know, thank you, I always say thank you for your interest or thank you for looking at my closet because if you start off with a compliment, um, just psychology, it makes them feel like 
I don't know. It's, it's a good way to start a conversation. They're more likely, I think, to buy from you or to get a great first impression. Uh, I majored in psychology in college. <laughs> not like that matters, but it's always on my brain how you, how you communicate with buyers. So anyways, um, very unique 1960s men's zip up cardigans. Um, I do really well just in general selling men's vintage sweaters. This one from the sixties, it was in great condition. It was acrylic, but it had a really nice fair aisle print to it. And it was a large. So I had this listed for $65 on Poshmark and a buyer is from like New York city. I have a lot of New York city buyers. Um, mainly with the vintage clothing. And he sent me a $50 offer and I was at 45 and I just said, thank you for your interest at this time. 55 is my lowest offer or 55 is the lowest that I will accept at this time. And I always put at this time at the end of my communication, <laughs> like as far as my lowest offer. And he said, that sounds good. He's like, this is a really awesome piece and he purchased it. So that just kind of goes to show that communication can help. Now it probably depends on the piece, the uniqueness and it doesn't work for everybody. Um, I had some people commenting on the video, like their experience and it doesn't always work for everybody, but that's just my little tidbit. Okay. The next item was something that I'm actually shocked sold. Um, the brand Earth, not to be confused with, there's another, or is it Earth Spirit or Earth something that's sold at like Walmart. Earth is uh, kind of like a comfort shoe brand. And I remember my mom used to wear these. Anyways, these were very rare. Dead stock, still new with the tags. Sneakers. Hardly ever, I've actually never found sneakers. And uh, Exer Walk is a style. I had them for sale for like, I don't know, I'll let you know up in the corner, not very long. So on Poshmark, somebody sent me an offer and I countered at 60 or no, they sent me an offer for 60. I accepted payment, not authorized or whatever on Poshmark. You know, that thing you get when their card or payment information is not up to date or invalid. So of course, um, I would say 90% of the time when this happens for me, buyers ghost me. You know, it's just, it is what it is. Um, however, I did message that person a couple hours later and said, please update your payment to complete purchase. Um, and a few days later they bought the shoes. So maybe they waited till payday, who knows, but the sale is complete and they went off to their new home today. The next item it, I took lower than I really wanted to, just because my Poshmark was super slow last week. Um, this was Vintage Victoria's Secret. I'm sure you've heard about Vintage Victoria's Secret. This is the gold label, which started in, I think, was it 82 or 83? And I'll put a picture of the tag in the corner just so you can keep your um, mind open to it, if that's something you want, want to sell. This is, and it was very interesting. It was very like Victorian vibes. It was a very thin cotton, um, something that you would see like someone from the early 1900s wearing, but it was a nightgown full length and white, great condition <laughs> sold for best offer. I think I had this listed for 59. Um, I did accept an offer for 42. I had had this listed for a few months, had not actually had this gotten attention. Yeah. I had watchers on eBay, but watchers on eBay does not equal somebody buying it. So when I had accepted the offer. And the last item to sell on Poshmark was actually something that I was going to pull this next week to send to thread up uh, T Tahari, which I believe is the lowest line of Tahari, um, Tahari ASL, and then there's Ellie Tahari. Um, so it was just a simple black blazer. Again, this is something I sent in to thread up in 2020, didn't sell, reclaim, tried listing myself and took a best offer of $20. Okay, now let's go to the next platform. I will switch over to Etsy. I had one sale on Etsy this weekend, but it was a nice one. So it was a pink satin trim, 100% wool blanket by St. Mary's. 
Hadn't heard of the brand before. I got this at the bins, so it was a decent size. I probably paid about five or six dollars for it, but it was in like new condition. A lot of times when I find wool blankets, they have a lot of pilling on them or maybe a few moth holes. This was just gorgeous. So it was listed again, not for very long, a couple weeks maybe. I'll put it up in the corner. And it's on Etsy for $85. The buyer paid $15 to ship it, and I believe it went across the country, so I did spend all $15 on shipping. Sometimes I make a few dollars on that, and I always ship through Pirate Ship. Um, I think that did go to Pure. No, it went to Oregon, and I'm in Illinois, so I consider that across the country, although technically it's not. You know what I mean. Okay. Now we're going to switch over to Thrilling, which is shopthrilling.com. It's strictly a vintage clothing accessories reselling website, selling website. I've been on there for since fall of 2020, and it's really like expanded. This last week, they just updated their portal slash website. So there have been tons of changes along with changes come some glitches. But I'm not complaining. I actually had three sales this weekend, which has been a long while since I've had three sales in a weekend. Granted, it was an extra day for the holiday. So, okay, those items, I'm just going to try to memorize off the top of my head because I don't have it up on my computer to look for. But one of them was a very, really cute uh, plush duster full length robe. Teddy, I guess it's like I call it Teddy. Uh, peach coral pink. The color was just phenomenal. It was in great condition. I do really well with teddy robes or just vintage robes in general. This one was only listed for a few weeks and I think it sold for $67. I'll put all this information up in the corner. And the next item that sold I've had in my inventory for probably two years is by some designer that was really popular in like the 60s or 70s, probably 60s that had a metal zipper. It was a sleeveless sweater that was heavily embellished in like really large silver sequins. I think sequins um, were on the runway and are predicted to be pretty large, huge for spring uh, 2022 fashion. I've been selling a lot of things with uh, sequins, a lot of gaudy 80s pieces pretty quickly. So I can't tell you how much it sold for because I don't have it pulled up. It was around $60 for a sleeveless sweater. Yeah. Um, grateful for that. I probably paid $5 for it or no, actually no. I think this was on a mannequin and it was like $2 and it, it made me do a second look. It didn't look vintage. The style didn't look too vintage, but I saw that metal zipper on the back. It gives, it always gives it away. Okay. And I had one more sale for thrilling. I'm trying to think what it was. It was a Plus size cardigan, it was striped and it had topiary trees on it. Like, you know, there they were different shapes. So like some animals and then one was just round. And again, like a month ago, if you watch my videos like all time, about a month ago I was in Peoria, Illinois and found tons of like QVC knit Rami cotton blend 90s sweaters and cardigans. I picked up the ones with more novelty prints just because they were four dollars and that's I don't like to pay more than like maybe five so yeah I passed on quite a few I'm considering going back and getting the rest if they're still there but um I've sold all I think all the sweaters maybe one's left but that one sold for I'll put in the corner like 60 ish dollars 65 dollars okay now the la or no I have two more platforms <laughs> And then I'll tell you my grand total, my gross sales. Um, Mercari. Mercari's hit or miss for me. But I had two sales over the weekend. And one was a blanket. I love selling vintage blankets. This is like a 90s fringe trim throw. And, of course, it would sell now. I've had it listed for probably a month. Maybe a lower month I'll put in the corner. It was a rabbit scene with Easter coming up. Um, I'm not surprised. It was by Goodwin Weavers. I look for the fringe blankets to be snag free because it's hard, really hard to fix those knit blankets. And um, made in USA tag. Or just a very nice print on it. I will use Google Lens to see because sometimes it could be currently sold on Amazon for like $20. And then I will definitely pass. 
Okay, so that sold for $55. And then the other item that sold last night was this Spider brand men's like green corduroy jacket. It was actually from 2012. I didn't realize it was, it was that old. It sat on my death pile for a year. Yes, I'm finally tackling my death pile because I'm not finding as much now currently. So I'm getting to, and my death pile is actually almost gone. So that one sold for best offer 45. I had it listed for 55, but it had a, a little bit of wear on the elbows in due to being from 2012. Um, I just would rather sell it. So it sold pretty quickly. I just listed that a few weeks ago. Okay. The last platform is Facebook. Um, Facebook Marketplace. It's a great way to shop, but it's also a great way to sell. However, um, I used to sell a lot more on there when I had lower dollar items. $20, $15 to $20 sales were pretty common for me there. And now I'm listing items for higher because I want a higher ASP. Therefore, I'm selling less. So I don't know how much longer I will continue doing Facebook if my sales are just not there. However, the two sales I did have was a travel on bagalini which i've never sold bagalini i've heard lori tata talk about it quite a few times um but i found a nylon bagalini purse at the bins it was like the blue nylon typical travel bag crossbody in like new condition so i had tons of uh, watchers and likes across the platforms and it sold for i forgot to pull that one up I'll put it up in the corner before a decent amount considering my cost of goods was very low, like $1.50, not even. It's like 14 ounces to ship. So, And then the other item to sell on Facebook, I'm trying to rack out. Oh, the Bagalini purse sold for $35. And the other one sold for... Oh, Okay. Um, I found this funny graphic sweatshirt that I um, was initially got for my sister because she used to um, leave early because she um, teaches online. So like when we have family events or whatever, sometimes she'd have to leave early. So it says BTW and it says, uh, by the way, I'm leaving early. So it's just kind of like I get a gift. But then I was like, eh, I don't know how she'll take that. I don't want her to get upset. So I just decided to sell it. It was in like new condition and $24. And I paid a dollar for it. So that is the grand total. I had like 20, 23 sales over the weekend. Okay, now my grand total of gross sales for being a part-time reseller. <laughs> and what I mean part-time guys, like part-time, um, was, ready? $1,206. So it was a holiday weekend. And it was a longer weekend because Monday the post office is closed. So do take that in mind. I don't make $1,200 every weekend. When I've been working more recently, though, I have been making $1,000 to $1,200. So it is possible um, if anybody's watching this at home and, you know, they're trying to find more income. It took me five years to get here. So don't be discouraged. My first year, I actually made nothing because I was reinvesting continually in my company. So... Thank you for watching on your way out. Don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, next week, I'm going on my last hurrah before um, I'm not going to leave the home for the baby. Uh, I will be driving on an Illinois thrifting shopping spree. So I need to get my death pile back, back up because who knows how long I'll be home and um, not wanting to go out with a newborn. <laughs> so... I will be posting a lot of content. Also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I post my sales highlights daily. Uh, my tips, tricks, my cool finds. I found some Rothy's the other week. Uh, some cool things. So, And I also, I'm not doing hauls as much because I'm not finding as much. So, sorry that my content has been, you know, few and far between recently. But, I would like to do a video probably the next few days. Um highlighting sales but that were like over $50 for the last few months. So hope you guys enjoyed. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends and have a great day. I will talk to you guys later.